just have to say, Tom Kell made me laugh when I walked in the door this morning. He goes, oh, is it hot pink day? And I said, well, you know, it's hot outside, and if you stand out there long enough, it'll probably turn pink. So perhaps it is. Whatever day it is for you, I want to talk with you this morning and have us co-create an experience of just recognizing that we are all connected. Do you read your quote on the front of the bulletin this morning? It's very simple, but it's just, it's really what the service is about. And this morning I'm going to draw from the Tao teaching, which I think is a beautiful way to talk about oneness. And I entitled the talk The Ocean of Oneness, honestly, because finding glory is coming out. Yeah. For those of you. <laughs> exactly. And I was thinking about the movie Finding Nemo, actually, and how all the time Dory was just always forgetting. She was always forgetting and, and could not recall and could not remember. And that's what I think we do. We forget. And, and we go through life in this, in this ocean, in this experience, and sometimes we forget, as what the quote says, we are that. We are not just a drop in the ocean. We are all it is. And so when I was thinking of Dory and then the new movie coming out, I can't wait to see it, uh, to be able to understand what her experience is and what it is for her, perhaps, that will bring her back to a place of connection. This morning with the prayers, the things that everybody was talking about in Orlando, the bicycle race, but especially in Orlando, and, and Asha's song is also so on point this morning because to me it is that, that fear that cuts us off. It's that sense of separation. It's that sense of isolation. And I've noticed it in my own life. And at times when I feel very disconnected or like I'm anything but a part of the whole. And in those moments, I know that I have made choices and decisions that have not served me, that have not served the greater good, the all that is. Every one of you. Because it's that ripple effect that what I put out there, for me, also touches each and every one of you. And so this morning, I wanted to just take a closer look <coughs> at how do we come together <coughs> as community, as family, as a world, in a time that's very, very hard, as was mentioned earlier. It's not easy. So I think we are called constantly to look at our spiritual practices. We're called constantly be mindful of our thoughts, of our actions, and like the song, the voice of love, to be able to speak from that place. When we are immersed in that energy of all that is, like the Tao, the, the book that I'm going to pull from actually is a translation and commentary by Ralph Allen Dale, and I love the way that he shares his interpretation of what the Tao has to say, which 2,500 years ago, Lao Tzu offers such wisdom that to, to me, in my mind, and, and such, it's even more powerful and profound, I think, than what is being spoken out now. And, and to be able to tap into that wisdom, into that flow, like a river, it always finds its way back to home, to that ocean, to that connection. And so I think it's important to look at, are we in the flow? Are we resisting the flow? What is going on for us individually? My dear friend Alan this morning, he's my chiropractor and he's more than that. He's, he's just a very dear friend. I, I uh, saw him this past week and, and I knew he was going to Mexico for a vacation with his family and, and you never know what Alan's going to be up to. And he was performing a wedding and then he said, we're also going to go to an, an island off, somewhere off of Mexico. And I said, well, some remote island probably for Alan and the Bermuda Triangle, because you never know with him. And he goes, no, it's an island called Holbosch. And I said, OK. And I said, so why are you going there? And he said, we're going to swim with the whale sharks. And I thought, that's my friend Alan, because no matter what it is he's doing, he is consistently and constantly taking action and doing things that, for him, bring to him a sense of connection. So he went there with his whole family, and I can't wait to hear what he has to share. So when you woke up this morning,
Did you feel connected? Did you feel part of the whole? What was your experience this morning? Or were you even aware of anything that you might have been feeling? Or are those things that you even contemplate when you get up in the morning and say, good morning, God, or whatever you call God, or good God, it's morning. What might be your expression to feel that, yes, I am part of the whole. And the, the particles and the molecules and all that I am is part of the vastness of all that is. When we are in that place, life is very different. We make choices, we speak words, our energy field moves out. And it's something that I believe helps to transform the world. And that's what I so believe that each of us are called to do. The Tao is often referred to as the way, the great way, and Ralph Allendale calls it the great integrity, which I think is a wonderful thing, the origin and nature of the universe. And he believes what Lao Tzu is saying to us is we don't have to try so hard. Because to him, trying means we're forcing. How many times have you heard yourself, I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to make it happen. When sometimes if we could just surrender and allow ourselves to lean into that powerful energy, that divine presence. Even Michael Singer in his book, The Untethered Soul, speaks about his experience. If you haven't read that book, it's a powerful book. But he talks about leaning into that energy of, of just knowing and a visceral experience. Because we are in this human body. We are flesh and blood. We are all of this in, in form. From formless to form, here we are. So how do we stay connected? How do we just simply know? And I love it because sometimes when I try really, really hard, I find myself perhaps in a place of fear because if this particular thing doesn't come to pass like I want it to, then I'm already disappointed because there's a part of me that's already saying, this has to happen. And I'm trying, trying, trying. I know when, when Judy asked for prayers and, and such for people going through cancer and so many different things out there, I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say, I'm trying so hard to fight this cancer, to beat this cancer. A few weeks ago, my talk, remember, was about health and spirituality. And it was called The Mysterious Journey. Because I still so firmly hold to, same thing with this, if we could just allow ourselves to be in the place of not knowing. Like sitting with the prayers this morning, we know that there is a greater good at hand. In our higher self, it's our human self that really doesn't have a clue. We don't have a clue, but are we willing to surrender and say, okay, God, okay, all that is, okay, great spirit, I surrender to you because I am choosing to let myself be immersed in a power that is greater than my human self, into a knowing, into an understanding that is beyond my human comprehension. To me, when we allow ourselves to flow back to that ocean of oneness, we are there. There is no trying. It isn't necessary. We just allow. How many of you have ever just floated in water? And you know what that feels like. If you try to float, what happens? You sink, right? When you breathe in, and you become that very experience of what is happening and what you let go, what happens? You're supported. You're lifted up. To me, this is the same principle. That support, that energy, that foundation is available to you in this energy of all that is. It's in the way, it's in the rhythm. It's in the flow of life. I think of 
returning to the ocean of oneness too as falling awake. That we are reawakening, that we are remembering. And there's a reading here that I wanted to offer to you because I just think it is so succinctly put. And I wanted to read that to you right now and let you just kind of take it in. It's, it's a beautiful story. A few travelers were passing a Sufi monastery. Their curiosity led them to look through the open door to see what was happening. People were screaming, jumping, freaking out, and it seemed just going completely mad. In the midst of all this chaos, the master was sitting calmly and silent. The travelers said to each other that they thought that monasteries are where people go to attain enlightenment. However, here, the master seems to have attracted insanity. He also seems to be out of touch since he sits quietly meditating, apparently oblivious to the chaos going on all around him. The travelers left, shaking their heads in disbelief. After a few months, these travelers once again came through that same town and passed through the monastery. They again looked through the open door, expecting to see the raving maniacs. To their utter amazement, they observed the very same people, sitting quietly in meditation. The contrast to their first observation seemed incomprehensible. Once again, they left shaking their heads in disbelief. A few months passed. Again, these travelers returned to that town and, of course, were curious to see what was happening in that monastery. They tiptoed to the open door and now found, to their surprise, that no one was screaming and no one was empty. The entire monastery was empty. Only the master was sitting there. Their, this time, their curiosity was so great that they entered the monastery and spoke with the master. How is it, they asked, that some time ago when we first came upon this monastery, everybody was jumping around and shouting like they were insane. The second time we came, these same people were silently meditating. Now we have returned a third time, and no one is here. Can you explain this to us? It is very simple, said the master. When you pass by the first time, the neophytes had just arrived and they were full of the world's madness. So I encourage them to purge the 10,000 toxins that civilization distributes to everyone. The second time you came, they were exploring the quiet depths of their own innocence, their connections with the universe, their own human species nature. Now you have come when they have all returned to their homes because they are ready to allow their new consciousness to facilitate the transformation of their communities to more human ways of life. At this moment, I am awaiting the arrival of a new group of neophytes. When you pass by next time, there will again be madness. So what's your journey been about? As you learn things and things come to you and you struggle and you fight and you try and sometimes I know I certainly felt like I've been going insane and going crazy like what is going on here? I'm trying to figure it out and to understand it. And then we go, oh yeah, I'm learning some things, am I not? I'm learning perhaps how to meditate. I'm learning perhaps how to be still. We hear, be still and know. I say, be still and be in the flow. Because in the stillness, there is still movement. The activity of all that is. Of God. Of life. Of the great integrity. Is always moving in around and through you and as you, in this beautiful expression that you are right now. Perhaps 
we can think of ourselves as that river, coursing our way, winding our way through the rocks and the obstacles, knowing that we are moving closer and closer to home, to where when the travelers came the next time, and perhaps we were in a place of meditation or being still, and then all of a sudden, we arrived. We arrived. And we were home. And like I mentioned earlier, we are just in that ocean of oneness. That ocean of all that is. To where the violence, to where the discrimination, to where the separation and the isolation that has us fragmented and frustrated is no more. Because we have transcended that. And we have become transformed. There's a beautiful writing, and how many of you have heard of Martha Beck? If you haven't checked her out, you know, get shaking your head. She is so profound in her writing, and she is so funny. Funny, funny, funny. And she has a new book out. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I came across this. And I wanted to just share this with you because I know when I do meditations here or I do sound and we just become still. Eckhart Tolle even says it's in the stillness where we connect, where we return home. And in that healing journey that I spoke about a few weeks ago, that was one of the things that I offer because in that place, of stillness, we don't have to figure it out. There's an understanding that just washes over us. A knowing that is so ineffable. That's what it is. That's the word of the day. You can't name the nameless. It just is. So Martha Beck says, in this writing is all for all, always. Give in to stillness. More importantly, open to it. Are you closed? Are you partially open? Is there something that's holding you back? Are you resisting that flow? Open into it. If you can do this for long enough, I'm telling you, you're going to experience something more miraculous and bewildering than anything you've encountered on your path so far. You keep opening and opening into the stillness, and at some point, something very unusual happens. Do this for long enough, and a moment will come in which you will experience the universe opening its eyes as you. the experience of the universe opening its eyes. Remember all that you are opening its eyes as you are. I think that's so beautiful. If you continue to expand the scope of the intelligence, that divine intelligence that's looking out through your eyes grows incredibly and possibly endless, magically vast. Think of the blue sky. It's endless. And then one day, you just might find yourself looking at the world with a new understanding. I made this. Do you know that you are that creation all the time? Whether you call yourself a co-creator or the I am. What I believe is that is all that we are. Not your individual identity, but the entirety. The consciousness that existed prior to energy and matter. The creator whose name is stillness, and out of which all things come. And you know for a fact that if a miracle were needed, you could perform one. These things have I done, and greater things than this can and will you do. This is not who, but what you are. You are the entirety, the oneness. There is no doubt, no self-aggrandizement, no ego. 
there's no you. There's no me. There's no self left at all. That small self. The spirit that wants to heal the earth for us, not for itself, but for us, is abroad in the human race right now. That's what we want to call forth. That's what we want to send and know in all these places and all these things that we hear about, even in our own lives and what's happening, the conflicts within us, to resolve those, to return to that realm of remembering, to return to that realm of restoration. It's in you and in me with the intention to show us that you and me are an illusion. There is only all, all for all, always. Just take breath right now. Allow that breath to carry you and immerse you in that ocean of wellness. I want to leave you with a few thoughts as I close this morning. We must transform and transcend at every level. This is from the Tao, again, three aspects of liberation. To free ourselves from limitations, misperceptions, and distortions. We must transform, as I said, and transcend at every level. Our institutions and ourselves to fully realize our human potential. All levels of this transformation must evolve in tandem because each part is the whole, and the whole is in each part, as Tom read to you in the reading this morning. Detoxify the mental, emotional, spiritual garbage that we inherit. Those 10,000 toxins, the stuff that we are given, the stuff that we're told we must be and do and learn, and this is who you are. Allow yourself to detoxify from that and to be cleansed and whole. I think of even being baptized. I remember that when I was born in that, in that um, belief, if you will, in that religious tradition. But I think about it now, and I can look at it very differently, or think of a waterfall or the ocean, because water is so cleansing. So I invite you today, and as you move forward in your life, to allow yourself to transcend the things that, that keep you in that place of separation, that you can free yourself from that illusion and truly know oneness and return home to that beautiful ocean and just be.